told my wife uh, many years before that I would like to find some way to go to D.C. and go to the wall and see my friends that are on the wall. And she kept on saying, you need to keep looking for it. You'll find something. And I found the run in 2005. And I've been going on it steadily since then. It's a tough ride. People here are family. They will do anything for you. Every year before Memorial Day weekend, thousands of motorcycle riders set off from Ontario, California on mission to Washington, D.C. They are run for the wall. For 10 days, they journey, making their way to the Vietnam Memorial. Once there, they meet up with almost a million more bikers for Rolling Thunder. Together, they ride to bring awareness to POWs and MIAs unaccounted for. They ride to heal. They ride to serve. They are the Brotherhood of Thunder. That's how we roll. That's how we roll. That's how we roll. That's how the thunder rolls. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, in liberty and justice for all. Hi, I'm Luann Everett, and I want to tell you how wonderful it is to see you back here. I was here last year. We look forward to the little time that we have with you and wish you Godspeed and safe passage on your very important trip. Riders, how did you like that escort coming in? There's just no place like Canton, as far as I'm concerned. I've lived near here for about the last 30 years, and that is the first time I've rolled through Canton without having to stop. <laughs> My name is Luann Everett, and I am the mayor. And uh, I was the first woman mayor of Canton, so I'm kind of a little bit proud of that. My family goes back five generations in this county. At my high school class, we put our money together and get a brick to honor them if they're veterans for my high school class. So we've done several and we unfortunately we've got another one to do uh, this summer. But I know most of the people and I just go, wow, you know, there's history, history, history. There's Mr. Dean, I remember him. And there's Sam, he used to park cars at first Monday. And it's always moving to come out and see all these people that I grew up with that are now gone. And especially, especially my dad, it, it gets very touching this time of year. This is my second trip out here, so I'm very happy to be back. And this year I've got my daughter with me. Uh, we're both uh, very happy to be with Run For The Wall Southern Route. Uh, this is my eighth time, her fourth, and I don't think y'all are getting rid of us anytime soon. For those of you here in Canton, I thought it might be really good for us just to really make sure you understand what we're all about. Run For The Wall has um, the mission to promote veterans healing to call for a full accounting of our POWs and MIAs, to honor all who paid the ultimate sacrifice and to support our military around the world. So we're very honored to represent as we cross the country on the way to DC and very happy to meet people along the way like yourselves who support us as well. So thank you very much for your continued support. Well, my name is Jim Ray, and I'm called Cracker Jack on the road. Nobody actually knows I have a first, middle, and last name further than that. Uh, I was in the service. I joined the Air Force when I was 19 years old in the 10th grade. Have the job of stopping and thanking people for supporting the run. We're talking about bridges, and we're talking about side of the road. Any place where there's a veteran, we try to stop and say hello to them, shake their hand. This is the Texas Veterans Home. This is one of the stops they go on every year. This is my very first year. It's something these veterans look forward to, and we look forward to it too. And I do this with a lot of other things, but this first time being an ambassador on the run, and I'm just enjoying the heck out of it, I'll tell you right now. This is my favorite part of the run, the VA hospitals and uh, seeing the nursing yeah. homes and all yeah. of that. 
Good morning, sir. How are you? We're going, we're riding from California to Washington, D.C. Oh. Okay. On motorcycles. Now, that's pretty silly, isn't it? Well, oh, I've done it. <laughs> there you go. He come go with us. Yeah, there you go. I've been in every state in the union. Down that wheelchair there is a buddy of mine. Yeah. He was a POW in Korea. Oh, my Lord. And they took him to China. Yeah. He stayed in prison there for three years. Oh, my and they Lord. tortured him so bad, you won't believe it. But anyway, he's sitting here waiting on y'all, waiting on y'all. So we're going to go see him. We'll talk to him. OK, real thank you very much. He's I appreciate it. How do you do, sir? I am so proud to meet you. I am so proud to meet you. Thank you for your service, and thank you for all you went through for this country. Thank you, sir. It's been pretty rough. If I hadn't have been young, I don't believe I would have made it. You must have been young and tough, I guarantee you that. I was only 19. 19. And I've lived to be 86. And I'm little bit, and I want a hug from a handsome man. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, sir, and I have this for you. It's a star from an American flag that's flown over someone's home. Yes, And sir. it tells you that you are not forgotten. Thanks for your service. I yeah. appreciate it. Can you make me a promise? Yeah. You'll be here next year for us, right? Uh -huh. Sure. All right. Take care, care, sir. Thank you, sir. You got it. They went into Korea, one of the first units. They really got hit hard. He was captured. He was a POW for, I believe they said, four years. Yep. And then they marched them from Korea to China. And on the way, every mile or so, they would shoot a prisoner, OK? And the only reason he got out of there and got released is they thought he was dying. So they released him. The history is right there. I mean, they yeah. tell you the way it is. And, and uh, it's an honor just to see these people. You know, that's, that's part of this ride. Mm -hmm. A lot of people that went over there and went to China, and we've never heard from them since. Even in, from Vietnam, Vietnam days, a lot of prisoners went to China. So it's not an unusual thing for people to disappear over there. They call Korea the Forgotten War. They do. That's what that's what the tag on it yeah. is. And realistically, if you think about it, it really is. Well, this is exciting. I mean, it was a great opportunity to meet you, sir. It's been great to meet you, sir. The sad thing is they don't get enough visitors. You know, yeah. some of them are just put here and they forget about them. Yeah. And that's uh, the families forget about them yeah. big time. And I have personal experience with that, yeah, so it's, it's, a, a, it's a sad thing, thing to warehouse them. Yeah. Now you can reach the table. <laughs> I like how solid you guys are. We're an organization called Run for the Wall. We ride motorcycles across country. We've taken a lot of fellow veterans to the wall, and it's actually a cure. It's hard to get them there sometimes. Sometimes they've gone on the mission two and three times <laughs> the trip before they've actually gone down to the wall because they have friends on the wall. And we make the rest of our mission to come see you guys because we love y'all. And this is the better part of our mission is to see y'all, is to visit with you. My name is Angela Fry, and I'm the Louisiana State Coordinator for the Run for the Wall. This actually makes my sixth year to hold that position. Basically, the thought that comes to my mind when I see the hundreds of veterans pull into Louisiana is that patriotism is not dead in the United States. We hear that every day. We hear, make America great again, and in my mind, America has always been great. I am so honored and humbled by being here and being able to say a few words to y'all. When every place I go, I try to remind people of you guys, what you did for our country and the sacrifices that you made. So thank you so much. The table before you has been prepared for those prisoners of war and those missing in action from all wars. They're unable to be with us today. Each branch of service is represented by a single place sitting on the table. If you will notice, there are no chairs placed around the table. 
This is symbolic of the absence of the soldiers, sailors, marines, and airmen not able to be with us today because of their sacrifice. Let us remember them. As you look upon this empty table, do not focus just on the ghosts from past wars, but remember all our heroes, those who formerly served, those who are currently serving, and those who will be called to serve in future conflicts. They are the ones we love. They're all Americans who love life and freedom as much as we do. And remember, they now and forever will depend on us to bring them home. This time I'm here to present a proclamation for this event. It reads, whereas the riders of the Run for the Wall represent the most noble quality of service, dedication to country, and willingness to serve others, and whereas the stated mission of the Run for the Wall is to promote healing among all veterans and their families and friends, to call for an account of all prisoners of war and those missing in action, and to honor the memory of those killed in action from all wars. Now, therefore, I, James E. Mayo, Mayor of the City of Monroe, Louisiana, on behalf of the Monroe City Council and its citizens, do hereby declare that each rider of the 28th Run for the Wall is an honorary resident of the City of Monroe, signed and presented this 23rd day of May, 2016, James E. Mayo, Mayor. Congratulations and have a safe ride. Here in about 30 minutes, they should start rolling in. They'll fuel up, and about 10.55, we'll depart here, heading to the Harley-Davidson Shop in Jackson. We're just escorting them, make sure they get there safely, do whatever we can do. Uh, when we're on the Louisiana leg, we only had uh, four, and then we picked up two more troopers in Monroe. Everything went smooth, no problems so far. Everybody's been safe. Been, it's been a great ride. Hey man, these guys fought for our country. The guys that have came and the guys that are still here, man, that's what makes America great, man, is, is our veterans. Great day, great time to be riding a motorcycle. It's the closest thing to like flying for most people. The Mississippi State Police come 10 miles into Louisiana to pick us up. They escort us all the way across the state. Uh, they close down the highway. Today, they clo actually closed the highway, and for the first time in history, the southern route stopped in the middle of the highway for a Huey helicopter to take a picture. This is a traveling mobile museum that my friend John and I uh, have been on the road about 18 years traveling around. We do high schools, we do venues, we do any place that somebody will have us pretty much. Last year we did 22 stops and probably a half a million people through the exhibit. This right here is a machine gun on a chopper. They want me to be one of those. 
I'm talking to you. I am. I am. <laughs> but I chose not to do that. His life expectancy was about 30 minutes. That's true. And so. And then uh, you was going to, they asked you to be a dog handler? Yeah, I was going to be a dog handler, and I found out that the ears on a dog were worth more than my ears. So I said, no, I don't want to do that either. It's a collection of about just about everything that you threw away if you were in the Army. <laughs> or that the government issued you and then you threw it away. <laughs> right here is a banana clip. See this right here? That right there is a banana clip. Okay, that, uh -huh. okay, that you part. I'd have three of them. One would go one way, the other one would go the other way, and the other one would go the other way. And I had them all taped together like that. And I had to fire my weapon from, the, from sideways. I couldn't hold it because the weight was so much that the banana clip would flip, uh, slip out. Each magazine had 30 rounds in them. Gotcha. And how it's long a, did it take for those 30 rounds to go through? Oh, not very long. Not Just very long. Because I had a full automatic weapon. Oh. You get that feeling that I've done something right. When two guys who don't know that each other can come up and look at it and go, Wow, and they can laugh over a pack of candy over bad sea rations or whatever. I don't know how to put it. It's a very rewarding job. To quote Mark Twain, if you can make your vocation your vacation, you've got the world by the ass. His significant other? I am his significant other of about 43 years yeah. worth. I got one 40 years, and she kicks my ass regular. There you go. And, there I, you and go. I bless her for it. <laughs> <laughs> I was in Vietnam 67, 68. I was there. Oh. With, uh, I ran lerp seams with the 173rd. Oh, okay. And I went back and was a combat photographer. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. And the way I wanted to address my PTSD in recent years is take advantage and encourage uh, our, our brothers in arms and their wives to tell the stories. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it doesn't matter what the story was. It doesn't matter what you did, what rank you were, what branch of service. And we all go, oh, I was airborne, or I was a yeah. Marine. Yeah. But, everybody uh, had stories. But what I tell everybody, uh, I had a guy come in the tent, and he wouldn't come in. He had a Hassett Vietnam veteran. He says, I don't belong in there with you guys. I said, what do you mean? You're in Vietnam. He said, but I didn't do anything. Oh. What do you mean you didn't do anything? Well, I just drove a truck. I started talking to this kid, and he drove a truck from... Quinn Yan on the coast up to Play Coup up Highway 19 is one of the worst highways in Vietnam. Yes. Yeah, it is. Uh, they bust blue trucks off the road and stuff. He made that trip 215 times. And wow. he didn't do anything. And he said he didn't do anything. Well, I asked him when he did. He said 67. 1967, I was at Doc Town. We were surrounded. We were overrun. We knew we were going to die on that hilltop. We knew we were going to die on that hilltop. Helicopters came out. Monsoon, raining, you couldn't see them, you could hear them. The green tracers are going up at these helicopters. And one of the guys shot up a star cluster, and, and crates of water, ammunition, medical supplies come out on the ground. We got out of there. Amen. Some kid in St. Louis, Missouri, where I'm from, didn't do anything, loaded ammunition on trains. 18 MPs took those trains to Oakland, California, but they didn't do nothing. A bunch of Navy guys didn't do nothing, loaded them on a ship. Another 110 guys took that ship across the Pacific Ocean and water and everything they went through. Landed in Pleiku, somebody else put, uh, in Quinyan, somebody else put that stuff on a truck and that kid drove it up the mountain. Some yeah. pilot and some guys loaded out a helicopter. Kids saved my life yeah. and the lives of so many others. I told them, you tell your story. You walk in this tent, you stand proud. Mm -hmm. Because we all have one thing in common, whether we were drafted, whether we were joined, we came to attention that day in those civilian clothes and we said, we will uphold the Constitution of the United States. We didn't know if we were going to be cooks, truck drivers, mechanics, run a machine gun or fly cobras. So what I want to encourage everybody, tell your story, tell it to your grandkids and your neighbors and your community, because you're all heroes. Amen. You're all heroes. If you have any Thank questions, you. I feel glad to ask and answer them. And if I don't have any answers, I'll tell you some hell good lies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Welcome home, brother. Welcome home. Thank Welcome you for your service. Thank you again. You're I welcome. appreciate My it. My pleasure. Yes, My sir. My pleasure. The ones that made it home now fight all the results from Agent Orange. And that's what he's fighting now.
but at least he made it home and has had has had a good life and raised three kids. I lost some good buddies over there. I do this run for the wall for a guy that I went to high school with. He lost his life over there in Vietnam. This is the Vietnam Traveling Wall. This here is like about the fifth of the size of the one in Washington. There's like 58,307 names on this wall from the guys that died in Vietnam. There's eight women. There's three sets of fathers and sons. There's over 39,000 names that are under the age of 22 or under. Two of them that were 15 years old, they lied to get into the military to fight. So, you know, it, it's, it's humbling. And this is the one that, there's two people on there that I knew when I was over there real well. Didn't do my job one day and the special five guy ended up getting shot down, helicopter crash and he died. This panel that, I have friends on a lot of panels, all over the place. But these two are very special to me because of uh, actually watching it there the day it happened. In fact, I helped retrieve the body. These are the people that died for our freedoms. You don't realize what somebody sacrificed for you, for what you have today. There's a lot of people that um, have never been to the wall and they're my age. Well, I'm gonna hopefully <clears throat> be able to walk down the wall with them and uh, go to their panel and maybe they can get healed a little bit. That's all. You don't want to go to the wall by yourself. You really don't. That's, it's hard. You know, it's, it's difficult. Uh, that wall means a lot. It, you know, it, it's a time in our history that was, hmm, uh, it was a difficult time in our history. It really was. And they all came home. They weren't, They were never thanked properly. Uh, we're just now starting to change that. And this run has, is what has helped that along. There's a lot of stops, there's a lot of huge stops, but this is an especially huge stop. The people around here, they really love the bikers when they come through, you know, just what they've done in the past, you know, for us as a, in a whole. They love to see the bikes come in, they love the people, they love to come out here and fellowship with them. You know, the town just loves the riders when they come through. For 16 years they have been here. We've been able to come here. We've been able to camp here. They got showers back there for our campers. We thank you from our hearts. We appreciate so much you guys do for us. From our hearts, from our hearts, we thank you so much. In this first box, $85 gas cards in here. These are prepaid MasterCards that we'd also like to donate to the run. It's $2,600 worth of gas cards that we'd like to give to y'all. Am I done? I'm done. Sorry. Big hand, big hand for Chicken Joe.
they're our heroes. That's what's important, you know, the recognition that they didn't get when they came home. They have done the greater. What we do up here is just a minor thing compared to what they've done for us. And we just want to let them know by the things that we do up here, we just want to let them know that we do appreciate them. Get emotional, because this is patriotic middle America. All that stuff in DC and you know, in all these big cities, they don't get it. They don't understand what is really important in this country. This is cold country up here. These are poor people who will give up whatever it takes to feed us in their school and even let us sleep in their gymnasium if we want. So to me, that is what this run has become.